Welcome back to The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. In the last episode we got back the sword Aaron died from the Lady of the Lake, which was pretty cool. I loved it. I forgot or had no idea in the first place that this is a thing. So today, what are we going to do? I do have the contracts tagged, but none of them are close by. So I think what we are going to do instead is clear out that question mark and maybe even do the main quest. Because that's kind of on the way. Oh, I wouldn't have that. At least fruit. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Do we need roach? Mm, yeah, why not? Roach is stuck. In the bushes. Run, Roach. This must be one of the infestations, right? In the vineyards. Oh no! It's it's there. At the windmills, isn't it? Tony Champion, the bells must give you one hefty reduction. You, you've the look of a knight. Oh, but there, monsters oh, yeah. have come. And they are waiting here until I cleared it. That's cool. And he knew Work that I'm the champion. The nurse, eh? Awesome. Oh, so <laughs> okay. Oh, here already. Was it? Was it worms? Yes, it's worms. Let's try our try out our new sword. Oh no, get out. Not good. Oh, we do need an ear then, right? For these guys. To trap them. Oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, come out here. No, no, not you. Ah! Oh, wrong, wrong side. Come on, move it. Oh, both are. Come on. Dang. That was not good. Oh man, maybe they come out here again? Ah, didn't get it. Ooh, they got me though. No, 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 no. Come here. Is that... no. <laughs> Dang. There, wait. Oh, oh, that's trapped now. Got one. Maybe if I place one here. No. Come on here. Yes. Awesome. Oh man. Got me too though. Ah, the timing is off. Let's wait a second. Until I have another charge. Oh, yeah, there. It's trapped. And it's dead. We need to destroy the nest though. Don't we? What is that? A roof. Huh. Somebody put roof tiles around the tree. Why not? Giant centipede spawning ground. Should destroy it. Yes, you should. Kaboom. Does anybody come back? Yes, they do. We, uh, I, thank you. You're welcome. We, uh, I, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Can we enter these? No, it's locked. That's a pity. Ah, I can move that. Bags of grain. <laughs> I can sell them. Okay. 
I see a fast travel marker, so why don't we use it? And it's new too. Awesome. Have we never been here? I mean, obviously not, otherwise we would have had uncovered that infestation place. Is there anything else on the way? There is not. So let's uh, visit the palace, shall we? Okay, where is she? Her Majesty. Maybe we should put our sword away. Even though it's amazing. She's up there, isn't she? What a nice palace. It's definitely inspired by the elven architecture. Garrot of Rivia, Master Witcher. I was not mistaken. You arrived and trouble followed soon after. Step aside. Got a matter for the Duchess. At last, Witcher. We've been on tenterhooks. Did you catch Milton's killer? Well, we didn't catch it. Yeah, I think it's pretty complicated. Case is more serious than we thought. The beast? I couldn't kill it. Didn't manage. We sent you after a monster and you returned with nothing? We are very disappointed. Situation's not quite that simple. Beast's a powerful vampire. Ha! <laughs> is this a problem? Is it too much for a witcher? A monster slayer? But everyone knows how to end a vampire. Draw him by trick into sunlight. Or arm yourself with ample garlic and drive a stake through its heart. Garlic's useless against vampires. Sun and stakes don't hurt him either. Those methods, pure invention. Only work in legends and fables. And Buckthorn? When I was a child, Grandmama Ademarta always claimed Buckthorn drives off vampires. Silver sword's your best option for keeping them at bay. But it won't get the job done, because only a higher vampire can truly kill another of its kind. Excuses. Ha! Your grace, I shall assemble a batu. Bring the matter to its end at once. The witcher need but tell us where to find this monster. Oh! We don't want to send him to his death. We are better than him. But both options are not quite appeasing, right? <laughs> uh, but he should stay out of this. Whoa, this is work for a witcher, not for your guardsmen. Yet when a witcher fails, my guardsmen must step in. I'll take my best. Forty hardened veterans. No vampire can stand up to that. Forty, fifty, a hundred? Doesn't matter won't make any difference against him. You have not seen my guardsmen in action. Can they fight fog? Hit a target that moves faster than the wind? How? What creature can do such things? Creatures like this one. Higher vampires, we call them. Each one's a little different. Unique or exceptional, you might say. Some transform into giant bats. Others communicate with animals, command them. Yet all are still brainless beasts. Dead wrong. Thinking of lesser vampires. Alps, Nekamaras, Catacans, for instance. They're ruled by instinct, sure. Attack anything that smells of blood. Higher vampires? They think. They employ reason. Monsters driven by reason. A curious contention. What, then, do you intend to do? Hmm. It's way beyond being some monster. This is a powerful being that's walked the world for centuries. Tja, impossible. If so great is their power, why have they not killed or enslaved us all? Don't usually meddle in our matters. Mostly stay out of our way because they don't care about humans one way or the other. 
And they do not fear we shall wipe them out one day. <laughs> They'd probably be pretty amused if you asked them that. They're well aware of their strength. Then what can we do? Do you have a plan? Oh, he actually listens to us. Try to talk to him. That's our best bet. I cannot believe this. Her grace summons a witcher to kill a monster. Instead, he wishes to chat with it. <laughs> know what I'm doing. His lover was kidnapped. He's being blackmailed. Blackmail? Be so kind as to explain how a vampire might be blackmailed. Higher vampires? They're like us, motivated by emotions, not instinct. Not only are they intelligent to an extreme, they're emotionally rich. Capable of feeling many things, even love. This one fell in love with a woman, a human. And he'll do anything to keep her from harm. You do not, I trust, suggest we let Milton's killer go free. Or wait until it murders again. We must render it harmless as quickly as possible. Well, yeah. Which is why that's my aim now, to prevent further attacks. Vampires only half the problem. Blackmailers at fault chiefly. Kidnap the woman to control the vampire. And what do you propose to do? I'll find the blackmailer, free the vampire's lover. You were to destroy him, not help him. No one else should die. That's most important. As soon as the woman's safe, he'll have no more reason to kill. Hmm. I admit to being swayed, Witcher. You may be right. Do you know anything about the blackmailer? Got one lead. A few scraps of paper. Blackmailer wrote the names of the vampire's victims on them. One of them stained. A drop of wine, looks like. So damn little to go on. You've no idea how wrong you are, my dear. Send for the Ducal Sommelier. Hop up! <laughs> Can you sniff out any wine? Wine is sacred. Here there is no such thing as a drop of wine or stains therefrom. They are stains from a drop of Estest, Evelus, Fiorano. Your Grace wished to see me? Witcher? Show him the paper scrap. Benoit, can you determine which wine made this stain? Mm. Mm, yes, yes. The, the West Bank of the Sara, too. That, that, that's rather obvious. Aged in barrels of Fauclair Oak. Hue, <laughs> deep burgundy. Clarity, high. <laughs> It's That's simple. awesome. Sans Real, the 1269 vintage. Oh, he even can date it. That's... That's impossible. The wine is produced at Castel Revelle, especially and exclusively for the ducal table. Uh oh Perhaps some Sans Real was stolen. We must go to the vineyard, see if there's not been an incident. Ooh, is somebody from the Kurd involved? Saint Real, never heard of it. It's highly unlikely you've ever had a chance to partake of it. As I said, it is only ever served to the Ducal family. Didn't stop it from ending up on that scrap of paper, unless your grace's sommelier is mistaken. In matters of wine, Benoit is never mistaken. If he says it's Saint Real, it is Saint Real. We must ride to Castel Revello at once. Discover what has happened. Wait. Your grace wants to go with me? Out of the question. I hope you do not suppose we will sit on our ducal hiney and do nothing while our duchy is in grave danger. Your grace, what you propose is far too dangerous. The witcher should go alone. It pleases me to see you gentlemen finally agree on something. But I've made my decision. We shall go, accompanied by the best possible escorts. You, Captain, and Geralt. We will travel incognito. We've no wish to give the court any reason to gossip. 
For the duration of this mission, I release you from your obligation to adhere to court protocol. In short, from now on, I am Anna Henrietta, not your grace. Yes, your grace. The Witcher, are you ready? Cool. Um, do we need some time? No, we go. Yeah, ready to go. Excellent. Give me a moment. I must don something more appropriate and concealing. Then we will be off. Okay, Anna. See ya. Vampire, oh. have you ever faced its sort before? I have. How did it end? Did you kill it? Your Didn't friends. have to fight him. I haven't killed anyone. Have you ever heard of anyone defeating such a vampire? Know of a man who defeated one, sure. But he didn't manage to kill it. Ultimately, only another vampire can kill a vampire. Hmm. I wonder how many there are. I mean, there are at least four tribes we learned or was it uh, no three it was three right and uh, they don't stick together no more though because they they ended that panthers have attacked the wagon operation let's go stay back your grace <laughs> we shall see to this <laughs> Save the hey, save us oh from the panthers wait what uh <laughs> Come on! Oh, dang. They hit so hard. No, no, no. Uh, I think I need a Quinn. Okay. Done. Time to move on. If, if not for you, we'd have been done for. Thank you. You saved our lives. It's okay. Oh, hooray. <laughs> and then slash, slash, <laughs> uh, cool. Go, go. So, we did our good deed for the day. Tell me more about this vineyard, Castel Rivella. Oh, it's the best in all Tucson. <laughs> An old master of the winemaking trade runs it, Fabrizio. You trustworthy? He's held his post for years. There's never been a problem. Uh, wait for me, please. I think I have to cross the bridge again. Oh gosh, it's not crossable. Um, can we jump that? No. <laughs> You're on your own. Oh no. Get up there. Whew. Okay, we got it. I'm coming. <laughs> Had some problems navigating. Okay. You call that escorting her illustrious highness? What were you thinking? Captain, this is not the time for such complaints. As for you, Witcher, next time keep close. Captain de la Tour, we did not expect any visitors from the palace. How are affairs at court? Doubtless you've heard of the Beast of Beauclair. Well, we've our hands full. Especially since the rogue last attacked in the palace gardens. I trust her illustrious highness was not harmed. Kind of you to ask, Master Fabrizio. I am well. Your... your grace? We were not warned. I shall order the salon prepared at once. That won't be necessary. As you can see, we are not here on an official visit. Naturally. 
Might I ask then what has brought you to Castel Ravello? Hmm. We are here for an inspection. This is an inspection. <laughs> You've got questions. You'll answer them. Oh, and who are you, sir, to speak to me this way? This is Geralt of Rivia. I'm the inspector. A he has come to Toussaint on my personal invitation. Which is to say... Which is to say I expect you to treat him with the utmost respect. Of... of course, your grace. Did you hear that, Witcher? Fabricio will be delighted to answer your every question. Want to talk about Saint Real? I am at your service. Hmm. Who's got access? How's the wine transported and had any wine stolen? I hope we can ask all of that. The Saint Real. How many vineyard workers have access to it? One might say only I do. Not like you make the wine all alone. At least a dozen others work here. I see you've little notion how wine is made. Grapes travel a long road before they become Saint Real. The workers assist me only to the stage of fermentation. I see to the maceration personally and let no one near the fat. Workers, again, assist me during barreling, but then I seal the aging barrels myself, each and every one. The wine lies in the cellar, gains character. Once this process is complete, it becomes Saint Real. And as it happens, only I have the key to the cellar in question. Well, then you're my main suspect. Who hauls the barrels to the palace? We've our own garrison. Guards who have served here for years and would answer with their heads for the wine. We'll not get anywhere asking questions, I see. It's a waste of time. Your Grace, how am I to understand this? Master Fabricio, we have proof someone's gained access to Saint Real. Someone who should not have, which means one of two things. Either you lie to our face, or you are an idiot who has had wine stolen from under his nose and not even realized it. In either case, you shall answer for it. But, but... Silence! And listen, I shall inspect the barrels in person, thus giving you time to reflect. When I return, I expect to hear answers. Remind me, where is this Andreal stored? In, in the main cellar, around the corner. I'll show you. I shall find it. Give me the key to the cellar and wait here. Of, of course, Your Grace. Here it is. Come, Witcher. Huh. Maybe we can take some bottles. What if Fabricio's <laughs> blackmailing the vampire? Consider that. He has his flaws, but I would never suspect him of such a thing. He's been very loyal. He owes all he has to me. His father frittered away the family fortune. He left his son an encyclopedic knowledge of wine. That is all. Fabricio lived as a beggar until I appointed him steward of Castel Ravello. Only then did he come into his own. Herb store. Mint, nettle, Wait, water. there's a herbalist? Nature's bounty. Welcome, wanderer. In need of herbs, perhaps? Wart for a sore stomach, or...? Prefer willow bark or iris root for stomach aches. Wart can cause dizziness, nausea. Forgive me. It's just that you do not have the look of one familiar with herbs. What looks that? And looks to seed, anyway. Me, I'm not out for common weeds that grow in any meadow. Need rare ingredients. Can you help me out, or should I move on? You must judge for yourself. Uh, I think I meant no offense. Meant no offense. And I took none. I should be the one to apologize, for judging by appearance alone. Tell me, your knowledge, how did you gain it? From an herbalist, you think, nearby? No, from somewhere a long way off. Care Morin, Northern Kedwin. Gods? That's the continent's other end. 
What are you doing in Tucson? Same thing I do anywhere. Killing monsters. <laughs> right. Show me what you got. The potion of clearance, potion of restoration, and perfume. And these dye solutions. Uh, I'm good, I think. I'm off. See you later. Where did your craze go? Not in here, it seems. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Have I not read that? No, I haven't. Now we have a lot of books I haven't read yet. Between worlds. In a plane not unlike our own, there once lived a ruler named Asgarik. When he was an old man, he fell ill. He felt that he would soon die, so he summon summoned an evil spirit, Marbas, and made a deal with him. As Grig would live until his son came of age and ascended to the throne. Ten years passed, as Grig died, and next to his body, Marbas appeared and turned to their heir to the throne. Your father promised me something. Now you must pay his debt. And just what did my father receive from your return? asked the heir. And what do I owe? Your life, said Marbas, and cut the heir's throat with his claw. The boy had not yet died when Marbas opened a gate to another plane. Out of it came a mercenary army with the evil spirit Berith marching at its head. Marbas sat on Asgarik's throne. Ill times had come to the land. The people rebelled against the demon's rule. Marbas sent Berith and his army after them. Berith slaughtered all the rebels. His armor glistened with blood. People began to call Berith the Crimson Sovereign. Marbus' appetite was not sated, so he sent the Crimson Sovereign to conquer neighboring countries. And so it went on. For hundreds of years, the Sovereign continued his march, losing soldiers as he went. But Marbus was never sated. Finally, there came a time when the people of all the continents were united under Marbus' rule. And the Crimson Sovereign was left alone, without an army. He knelt before Marbus and said, You hired me and I have carried out my task. You promised me a weapon from which no shield can provide protection. You shall receive it, Marbus said, flashing his teeth. He reached into his garment and drew out a vial filled with flake bile. He flung it at the Crimson Sovereign. Yet the Sovereign knew Marbas well enough to expect treachery. He opened a passage to another world and fled before the vial full of flake could hit the floor. Yet ill luck would have it that while he was fleeing, a gale came flying out of his open portal. It opened the window to Marbas' throne room and spread the plague bile out over the entire world. Ever since Marbus had dwelled in a tower standing above the a continent of dead bodies and beasts tran transformed by the plague, and Berith, still calling himself the Crimson Sovereign, wanders from world to world as a mercenary searching for vengeance. Cool. What's that book about? It's just a book. Okay. The stories are awesome. Now where did she go? <laughs> oh, back there! <laughs> Sorry, your grace. Anna. I mean... Nice that she waited for me. I wanna go everywhere and steal all the sacred wine. Oh, grapes. Not wine yet. Chardonnay. No, oh, barrel tap. <laughs> A wooden hammer. We need it for our wine making, right? Aha! Aha! There is the chest with good stuff. Eau Claire, Piano, Fiorano, and Duke Nicolas Chardonnay. Okay, cool. Let's see. 
let's go. Uh... So where do we start? Let us see if all the barrels are present. Here's the inventory ledger. Okay. Mm, Vintner's log. Fermentation completed with no complications. Tapped above sediment line. Here it is, barreling. Hmm, everything lines up at first glance. Neatly and thoroughly documented. Then we must follow our other lead. Benoit said the stain came from the 1269 vintage. Let's find it. What if it was stolen from the court and not from the seller of the winemaker? Couldn't that be an option too? Ah, here we can read the vintages, the dates. Okay. <gasps> A short history of Pomino. Tough Pomino does not enjoy the fame of Estes or even Erelus. It still attracts a considerable number of admirers and remains among the best vines in the world. Few, however, know how close the world came to losing its slightly acrid, surprisingly deep aftertaste. The cause of this averted disaster was Philoxera mortifera. That is to say, Philoxera the deadly a species of aphid whose sudden attack nearly wiped out all existing vines of this variety. For many weeks no one was able to exterminate this pest and it seemed Pomino was doomed to extinction. In the end, however, the aphids were defeated by ducal alchemists and a carefully selected group of vint vintners was appointed to ensure its vines took root at Castel Bravella once more. Some experts from the time of the plague claim their restoration efforts introduced cross-contaminants and never again were they able to extract from this grape all the same bottomless flavor as before. Oh, what a tragedy. Okay, let's start here. That's where we came down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the history of Estes. Now we have to read all the wine histories. Estes often considered one of the chief treasures of the people of Toussaint, is the best known of the vines cultivated in that region. It is hard to determine when exactly the first barrels of Estes were matured, though we can surmise it must have been around the time of the first human forays into the duchy's present lands. What is certain is that this wine truly gained fame only during the reign of Duchess Adela Marta, who held Estes in near divine esteem and for that reason bestowed upon Castel Ravello the privilege of being the official ducal vineyard. She also reserved a special place in the cellars of the Boucler Palace for Estes, and to this day two barrels of every vintage are ceremoniously deposited on those shelves. The tapping of any of them is, by order of the ducal addict, Vino Sanctus Est, punishable by death, through dragging behind a team of horses. Ooh. That hurts. Okay. Ever lose. 1269. That's what we need. Ever lose. I like it. Quite dry. An excellent wine. Oh no, it's the wrong wine. You've right. Good taste. Yeah. It's 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 the it's the date, but not the wine. Okay. What's that? Est est. Est est. I think everyone and their mothers heard of this wine. <laughs> Among the best in the world. Castel Ravello is famous for it. Fiorano. Fiorano. Dandelion's favorite. Adores it. Ah, yes. That sophisticated palate of his. <laughs> Pomino. Got Pomino over here. No commentary? Do we have more histories of wine? No. Okay, let's go upstairs. Ooh, that looks official. San Real, 1270 vintage. That's the wrong year. Keep looking. Okay, it's not up here, maybe on the other side. You're in the way. Anna, out of my way. What 
What's that? Nothing. Just an old barrel. Come on. Nothing here. Ooh, I take that. San Real. Barrels are dated 1268. Close, but not quite the right <laughs> year. Is there something? I don't think so. So it's here. That's the last one. Yep. Got it. Right here. 1269. What now? Let's see if any barrels are empty. Wanna open them? For now, a knock will suffice. If you hear a hollow thud, we will have found what we seek. But how do we know in the first place if all well f if all were full? Full. Full. Knock knock. This one's full too. The last one is not right. As always. <laughs> Come on, knock there. Full. This one's full too. Looks like all the barrels are full. Dead end, I'm afraid. Hmm. Full they are. The question is, are they full of San Real? Grab a tap and a hammer. We shall open them one by one and test. Huh. Ready. We can start. I have that. Oh, now we drink all the wine. Ready. Step aside. I wouldn't taste it. <laughs> she indeed drinks it. So? Those hints of spice. Mm, distinctive. This is Son Real. <laughs> what if there's poison in there? And that was all just a plot to poison her. Revolting, bitter, long. Could have gone sour while aging. Impossible. This is not wine. This is contaminated refuse that should never have made it into a barrel. The fact that it did was no accident, I'm sure. Master Fabricio, let's see what he has to say about it. Master Fabrizio, <laughs> I am very disappointed. But your grace, uh, I... You are a step away from losing your head. Speak the truth and you might yet keep it. I... I, I admit it. I, I, I sold a barrel of Sorreal. I beg you to forgive me. Why did you do it? I couldn't resist. The sum they offered, it was enormous. I gave in. Is what I provide not enough? I wished to buy back my family's estate. For here, nothing is truly mine. I've a roof over my head, ample food to eat, but what is a nobleman without land of his own? I shall tell you everything, if you agree to show me mercy. Hmm. Who do you sell the wine to? A few weeks passed after pheasantry, a rich nobleman approached me. He called himself a diplomat, well-connected at court. He suggested we embark on an enterprise. Some of his clients had offered dizzying sums for even a drop of Sonreal. He was to serve as intermediary. This man's name? He never revealed it. He was tall, black-haired, and spoke with a foreign lilt. 
He claimed to hail from Sintra. I've no Sintrian aristocrat at court. Really thought nobody'd find out. I was a fool, very foolish. I beg you, your grace, you must forgive me. Wine itself, how'd you hand it over? We met under the cover of darkness in the ruins of Fort Astre. A dozen or so men came to collect. Armed men, the kind that stink of trouble. I had hauled the barrel there, they transferred it to their cart, and we went our separate ways. That's it? That the last you ever saw of them? They... that is to say, a, a few days passed. A, a messenger arrived. He said they wished to buy another barrel and... Well, I've prepared it. Have it ready to deliver. Hmm. That's enough. You know all we need to know. Your Grace, I beg your forgiveness. Get out of my sight. Captain, have your men take Master Fabricio to the dungeon. He must answer for his crime. High treason the charge. What now, Witcher? We set a trap. Need to catch the wine thieves. Sentry and Noble could be our blackmailer. Next, transport. I'll take it to Fort Astra. Damien and his soldiers will cover me. For once, I agree with you. We will do as you say. Let me know when you are ready. That's getting interesting. Wait a minute. Make haste. We await only you. Huh. Okay. We would not have made it far without your grace. The important bit is yet to come. That's intriguing. I indeed want to know who that guy is and uh, why he does buy the wine. I mean, it was probably just because he can. And he likes it. <laughs> but uh, what's the connection with our vampire buddy? That's the question, right? This is such a nice vineyard. And even if it's not his own, I mean, he is the one who's in charge here. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. But he messed it all up. And now he's in jail. Poor guy. Or not. I don't know. What are we going to do? Do we do that quest immediately? Or are we going on a trip to that question mark, for example? I think to end the episode we do that real quick. That might be a bandit's camp because it's such so close to Fox Hollow, right? And maybe in the next one we can grab these question marks. And uh, then this part of the map is at least done, right? That would be good. So... Ah, that out outpost. There's still a quest for us that we don't know of, right? Or something is going on there at least. So... <coughs> let's do that real quick. That's right. Roach? Oh no. Ah, no, he's... she's here. I thought she spawned inside again. Something's hmm. not right. Oh! Oh no! It's hounds. Hell hounds. Now we have five charges. So what exactly does that do? We don't know still, right? Now we have ten charges. Does the sword keep the charges? I don't think so, right? It'll be at zero again when we next attack, I suppose. Ooh! That's worth it. Alistair Carnarvon's journal. Uh, 26th of July. Unsure where to start to dig? Ask the nearest old bash woman. 
or old men whittling by the road. They know everything. Yes, yes, I know, it takes a great deal of patience and you have to separate the wheat from the chaff, but it's the best way to learn about local legends. That's how we came to find Fox Hollow, where they say the spoil sprouts clay pots. Oh, that again! Ah, oh, we read about that in at Fox Hollows. 28th of July. We dug up a part... We dug up part of a vineyard on the outskirts of Fox Hollow, but what we found there, those were not pots. Those were 11 funeral urns. It seems the village is built atop an ancient Aetzade necropolis. That cemetery dates, by my reckoning, to the time before the first landing, so the graves might be full of valuables. The ancient elves buried their dead along with great wealth. We've already dug up a few choice baubles, but I'm sure if we look deeper, we will find much more. 12th of August. Today we started a new dig in a new location. Matthias spied a beautifully ornamented cameo in the ground, and when he tried to grab it, he discovered it was clenched in the hands of a skeleton. Anselm started to mock him, but quickly lost all desire to laugh. The valley was full of elven skeletons, men, women, even children. The bodies were all mixed, with limbs lopped off, many heads missing, and children with crushed ribs ca rib cages. What happened here? 14th of August. Another sleepless night. Blood, cries, wails. I awake drenched in sweat. Then I doze off for a moment and the same happens again. I told my fellows to dig a deep hole. We'll throw that cursed cameo inside. It belongs in the ground with the rest of the dead. 16th of August. Matthias disappeared during the night. No one saw him leave camp. His, his things are all in place. Anthem says we should follow his example and flee while we still live, but I, I cannot leave it like this. This valley is full of bones. Anselm screamed in my face, called me a madman, but I must tell someone what we have found. They say there is a group of archaeologists from Castle Gropian at the Therms ruins. Rest is covered in blood. Ooh. Oh. So, here I am. I am an archaeologist. <laughs> Let's find out what happened and if we can find the cameo, right? So I think we got a new quest, didn't we? Was it a treasure hunt? Yeah. The Curse of Carnarvon. And thus we found a new quest. Most probably this was the site of the battle, right? Where the the king of old slew all the elves and the elven king in that valley. Hmm. But who killed that guy then? Maybe he just died of... what is that? One of the plants? Yeah. Maybe he just died then of... Oh no, I have seven charges now. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, they... Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm using charges. And I'm back. I was looking at my charges, not at my health. And they are more vicious than 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 the others we've seen, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm stuck. Not good. Dang. Wow. What what did that? Okay, let's quen up and I think I'm bleeding, right? Now I have only one charge left. I mean, we could... Uh, I could drink a swallow to heal up faster. I mean, I'm poisoned, most probably. But... Uh, Quinn? Yeah, that's much better. 
Oh yeah, right. I I have Ah now the, the charge triggered. So it charges up to ten. And then I think I can use my adrenaline points, right? That's how it works. Oh, 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 consequence. Five, three, no, no, I got hit. Ah. Okay. That's cool. I mean, with the sword. Hey, dang! No, 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 no! It did so hard! Uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> I'd be the tree. Okay. Okay, we're good. I think I drink another swallow. <laughs> oh gosh. They are different. I mean, the color is different too, but they are also more vicious than the others. But they don't have uh, the other little plants. Oh, there's the treasure. Hmm, but that's not bad either. Let me see. Gray, we used it already. No. Knight's armor. Ooh, 300 crowns. That's good. And that's the dick side. I mean, we do have elven ruins here. There's a statue and a staircase left of something. But uh, we do not know if this is the side of the battle. I mean, we know that the the elven king hid in the other ruins and then he died and was buried where we have been. So we found his grave already. Yeah, it's pretty close to Fox Hollows. Ah, cool. Nice. And I think that is a nice ending for the episode too. I don't know if we are going to do the main quest in the next episode. We are still missing some things. I mean, the two gear sets, then... Hmm, I don't know about the Quent. <laughs> then all of these. Fists of Fury, yeah, we could do one episode fist fighting. And uh, that should be... Yeah, that's it! That's what I meant, right? Let's tag it. Isn't that... No, it's not. It's all the way... Ah, that trading post. Maybe I, I mistook the trading posts. For each other. Yeah, maybe that's what happened in my mind. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that would be this, but I think I was thinking of that. <laughs> that was a very weird sentence. But yeah, that's it. Maybe do these to attack that so that I remember, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see, we'll see. But I end this one here. Thank you so, so much for watching it. Have a wonderful and adventurous day and goodbye.